All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Aperio Foundation webinar series. Uh, my name is John Lewis. I'm the Chief Software Architect at Unicon and also a founding member of the Board of Directors of the Aperio Foundation, and I'd like to, to welcome you to our session today. Together with our partner organizations, the Aperio Foundation represents a network of over 180 higher education institutions and commercial affiliates worldwide. Aperio is dedicated to supporting community collaboration to realize the creation and sustainability of open source software to support the academic mission. We have a number of software projects being actively developed and maintained around the world. Some are new innovative projects that are just getting started. Others are stable and mature projects that are in production at uh, hundreds or even thousands of institutions worldwide. You can learn more about our various projects and communities at our website uh, at uh, aperio.org. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce the Unitime project. Unitime is a comprehensive educational scheduling system that supports developing course and exam timetables, managing changes to these timetables, sharing rooms with other events, and scheduling students to individual classes. It's a distributed system that allows multiple university and department schedule managers to coordinate efforts to build and modify a schedule that meets the diverse organizational needs while allowing for minimization of student course conflicts. It can be used alone to create and maintain a school's schedule of classes and or exams, or it can be uh, interfaced and integrated with existing student information systems. I'd like to mention uh, before we begin the webinar uh, that it is being recorded for others to view later. Uh, and I'd also like to ask that if you have questions as we go along, please post those questions in the chat window and we will circle back to those uh, at the end of the presentation uh, and might also be able to provide some answers uh, in chat uh, along the way. I'd like to take a moment to thank Fred Dixon and all the folks at Big Blue Button and Blindside Networks for hosting the Aperio webinar series online. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce our presenter. Uh, Keith Murray is a, the Director of Space Management and Academic Scheduling at Purdue University and a founding member of Unitime LLC. He has over 25 years of experience with management of academic resources at Purdue University, including timetabling, space planning and allocation, facilities utilization, and campus planning. He's a project manager of the university timetabling system Unitime and a founder of the project. Um, Keith is also uh, joined today by his colleagues, Tomas Mueller and Stephanie Schlettenhofer from Purdue University, who are also founding partners at Unitime LLC. Uh, and they'll be online in the uh, chat session, uh, able to answer some questions there, and then we'll talk over those uh, at the end as well. With that, I'll turn it over to Keith. Okay, thank you very much, John. Today, I'd like to go through a um, introduction to Unitime. Um, I understand many people probably are not going to be familiar with timetabling system, so I want to walk everyone through what we, what our project does, um, our goals, and how we might be able to help other institutions who are interested in producing good timetables for their students. So what is educational timetabling? Um, we look at it as the process of, of assigning classes, and it may be exams, to the times and locations that they're held. Um, it's actually a very difficult optimization um, problem with many competing objectives. Um, these may be student conflicts, faculty requirements, and space re constraints. Uh, why is this a needed project? Um, for us, um, the major criteria was trying to minimize the student conflicts and help them to um, gain their degrees on time. This is a major concern, uh, particularly now in, in most state institutions. Particularly here in Indiana, our state's even passing a law, or has passed a law, requiring students to be able to get their courses within four years, or the institution is responsible for providing those courses at no, no cost to them. Um, so there's a very strong motivation to be able to get students through, and to do that, we need to be able to get them at their courses required for their degree. The other re major reason is to make use of limited resources more effectively. Uh, the cost of building classroom facilities and um, any time lost due to having wasted sections um, that aren't at times that meet student needs are all cost to institutions that need to be minimized. Um, we also want to make the process much more transparent and sustainable. Rather than one, one person at your institution sitting in a back room trying to put together schedules that no one else understands, 
when you have a automated process or a computerized system, um, it's fully understood um, what the constraints are being dealt with, how they're being dealt with, so that if there is um, a change in personnel, the information on how timetables have been made in the past is recorded within the system and is not a surprise um, if there's a change in personnel. We also wanted to improve the fairness and satisfaction of the timetable. Part of that's being transparent in how it's created. If people know how it's created. Um, it's not felt that we're deliberately trying to be unfair to anyone. The, the process can be easily explained, and um, if there are problems, we can work on trying to improve a solution for everyone. Another major concern for us is what-if scenarios. For example, we recently had a case where we want to remodel a very large classroom on campus. Um, can we take that out of um, circulation and still build a satisfactory timetable um, minus a major resource? And we also want to be able to adapt to changes that occur you know, more regularly within the institution. There are curricular changes, um, changes in the facilities required for courses if the size of courses change and other similar type of circumstances that we have to deal with on a regular basis. Um, having said that, um, there really is a gap between what is done in practice and what's possible to do in creating timetables. As it stands now, most institutions use a manual process for creating their timetables. Um, as I said, there may be one one old guy in the back room um, putting together the timetable for the institution, or it may be shared, um, but it's people trying to figure out a complicated problem the best they can by hand. However, there's been a lot of research on this problem over the past couple of decades. Um, there have been numerous um, algorithms that have been created by researchers in the field um, that can be applied to more effectively solve the problem. And we're at a stage where computers are becoming fast enough to solve even some of the largest problems. Purdue is an institution of 40,000 students. We can solve the timetabling problem in an hour or so using relatively moderate e equipment by today's standards. Uh, the Unitime project, to give you a little history, began as a research project back in 2000. Um, my goal at that time was to produce an automated course timetabling solution for Purdue University, particularly for the large lecture problem, which was causing us difficulty. Um, the person responsible for managing that was having trouble trying to fit all of the large lecture courses into the rooms we had available. Um, so to start with, we wanted to um, understand the latest research in order to come up with the best solutions for those problems. Um, as we've worked on this problem for the last 14 years, um, Unitime has become a full enterprise system that deals with university timetabling needs, student scheduling, exam scheduling, and event management for the whole institution. Um, as I say, the system uses state-of-the-art optimization algorithms that have been developed out of the research. Um, we also want to make the system available to others. So the system is an open sourced web-based system, um, mostly written in Java and other modern technologies, um, so that it will be usable for many years into the future. And we also incorporated distributed um, data entry um, and timetabling capabilities so that it can be used in multi-user environments. For, at Purdue, for example, we have each um, department responsible for developing most of their own timetable. So they can use the system independently of each other, but the system coordinates resources that have to be shared, such as rooms that might need to be shared. And um, since students will be taking courses across multiple departments, um, an awareness of what curricula require the courses um, that your department may be offering. Uh, in course timetabling, um, Unitime deals with a number of constraints. Um, the most obvious is are room sizes, equipment, and availability. There are faculty room and time preferences that occur. The structures of the courses are often very important. Um, all courses aren't a simple lecture. They may have laboratory and discussion components. 
um, that need to be coordinated. If there's a faculty member teaching a lecture, there may be associated laboratory sections um, and recitation sections that all of the grading is handled by the one professor. So there's a coordination that needs to be occurred in those, in those courses and the structures um, will correspond to that. Um, also very important to us is the student course demands. Um, we want to minimize the conflicts, so we have to understand what courses students take in combinations with each other. This can either be done by looking at um, the curricular requirements of the students, uh, pre-registration of courses by students, or by looking at last like course enrollments or any combination of those three elements. As I said, our, our goal is to assign classes to times and locations um, such that any of the required constraints are met. But also, we want to optimize as much as possible on desirable objectives. In our case, um, minimizing student conflicts is the primary objective. But we also have to accommodate room and time preferences. Um, some courses have to be taught in particular rooms, and faculty members always have their preferences that we try to accommodate as best possible. Um, there may be preferred time distribution, such as a lecture has to occur before a laboratory. So the students have the material they need to understand for that laboratory session. Um, there's fairness criteria, um, particularly when you're scheduling courses um, in large lecture rooms that may be used by multiple um, departments. You don't want one department to have all their lectures in the prime times, whereas other departments um, can only have their courses very early or very late in the day, for example. We also try and deal with such issues as travel time. Um, if you're a large campus, um, your rooms are not all in one location, and it can be difficult for students to get from one end of the campus to the other. Um, so we try and build schedules for students that accommodate the fact that they may have to travel between um, different areas of campus and try and minimize that travel time. As I said, our, our primary concern um, among non-required um, objectives is to minimize student conflicts. Um, a conflict occurs any time a student cannot take any combination of classes. The most simple case is when those classes overlap in time. Um, that could be a direct time overlap or if the classes are too far apart and offered at adjacent times. Um, a related issue is when you have multiple sections of a course, there may not be enough space in um, overlapping combinations of classes. Uh, for example, in the, the diagram here, um, we have math classes a math class that is split into two sections, and a stat class. Um, if you need to take both math and stat, um, but the math sections at the time that you would need it, which is the section that doesn't conflict with statistics, is filled, um, you're going to have an in, a conflict, um, not because there's not enough space in the class, but the only available sections are going to conflict with each other. Um, as I mentioned before, course structure can be an important component. Um, in Unitime, we recognize this, so we try to both make um, the course structure very easy to see and manage um, and to allow multiple course structures um, to exist um, within the offerings of the institution. An example here, we show a class Math 170. Well, that class um, can go under multiple names. Um, commonly referred to as cross lists. So actually, STAT 170 is the same course. So when you timetable the course, you're relying on the same resources. They have the same instructor, the same room, the same students. Um, they may appear differently in your schedule, but as you're timetabling, you have to make sure you're allocating the correct resources to that course. The course may have structure as well. This is a lecture and laboratory class. Um, so we have to make sure that um, all students enrolling in the cl class receive the lecture in the laboratory. Um, the fact that um, you have to be in a particular laboratory with the lecture is illustrated by a parent-child relationship shown by an indent here that indicates um, 
if you're in the lower listed class section, you're required to be in the one, uh, the, the part, the subpart above that class. So if you're in the A laboratory, you have to be in the parent lecture. A number of other constraints can be derived from the relationships in the course structure to prevent overlaps in classes that need to be taken by the student as part of the offering. The core of the system is the solver. Um, we use a constraint-based solver. Um, it can be used in modes that range anywhere between fully automated to manual solution or combination. For instance, um, if you're planning a timetable for your course and you know there's a, a course by a prominent professor that you need to accommodate their particular room and time preferences, you can require that or set that as a predetermined factor to begin and automatically timetable the remaining courses around that. Um, so there's the ability to accommodate both um, manual timetabling and automated timetabling within the same, same system. Um, as I've mentioned before, we looked at the research and we've been involved in the research. Um, all the work behind Unitime has been published in refereed journals. And our system is actually the winner of an international timetabling competition in 2007 that looked at both exam problems um, demand-based timetabling problems, and curricular-based timetabling problems. The solver itself is easy to extend um, so that if your institution has some specific requirements, the solver can actually be tailored to add new constraints um, to address problem concerns. We also mentioned that the application can be used in multi-user environments. Um, this is necessary because of the case where the information necessary to build the timetable often resides in multiple areas within your institution. Um, most of the academic departments are the ones who, knew, who know who needs to teach a class, what their time availability is, um, what courses they're um, competent to teach, and what students are going to need to be scheduled into these classes. So some of those factors can be applied. Um, but typically, um, you may have a registrar's office or someone else who's centrally timetabling um, the problem. So they need to be able to gather that information. So Unitime allows that information to be collected from distributed sources who can either timetable on their own or someone can centrally timetable the courses based on that information which is gathered centrally from the system. Of course, the timetabling and the schedule management process is a little bit more complicated than just gathering some information once and creating a timetable that's going to be perfect. Um, any of you who have been involved in timetabling the classes for your institution are sure to recognize that the moment you publish a timetable, someone has something they want to change about it. So over the life cycle of a, of a timetable, you're going to be entering data for a term, you're going to create a timetable, but immediately there are going to be some adjustments that needed. Um, to handle these, we allow interactive um, manual changes or assisted changes where we can offer suggestions for a best time fit or room fit for a course when you need to make a change. Um, and beyond that, we need to accommodate the student scheduling. Um, once you have a timetable, um, that's part of your problem. Filling that time, filling the classes in a manner that meets student needs is also important. Um, throughout the process, there are often other ad hoc changes. In our institution, we often have room changes to accommodate um, enrollment pattern shifts where we need a larger room for a course or um, some other change that ago occurs during the course, such as water leaks in rooms where we need to change the room assignment or anything else that may occur during the semester. And of course, um, you'll want to be able to use some of the information that you have used from your timetable in future years. So we need to be able to 
copy and roll forward information from one term to another so that it can be adjusted, at least the inputs adjusted. We're not saying you have to use the same timetable term after term, but the input data often is repeated from term to term and it's helpful to have that information flow seamlessly into the next term that it would be necessary for. The second major component of the unit time system is the student scheduling. As I noted before, once you have a timetable, um, it's not always as simple as just throwing that out to the students and having them sign up for classes. If you want to ensure that students are able to get the courses they need, um, you may it's helpful to have a process that can look at all of your student needs and schedule them to the classes accordingly and understanding what the impact will be on other students. Um, a simple example is that if you create a timetable but then have open it up to a first come first serve process, earlier enrolling students may block out later students. An example is a student who needs to take both a math and a chemistry course, um, but there's some conflict between um, sections in the course may prevent them from being able to get both courses. In this case, um, where there are multiple sections of math and chemistry, um, say popular times um, may be used first, so a popular times of the math and chemistry courses can fill up. And if you need to take both math and stat, you may not be able to get both of those, or sorry, math and chemistry, you may not be able to get both of those because time that you would need for the math class is filled up by students who prefer a time, um, leaving you only with a choice of being able to take the two courses you need at the same time. Um, so unit time allows for either a batch process or for a online process that allows students to um, optimize the chances of getting into the classes they need. Um, to do so, um, we have an interface where the student puts in their course requests, um, may also put in free time requests and, and suggest a schedule that best meets their need and has the capability of modifying that schedule for um, tailoring to their individual needs. As I noted, there's both a batch option for student scheduling where all students are scheduled at one time after a timetable is produced. This would usually be based on student pre-registrations. This, this method actually gives the most optimal um, timetable and student schedules for the student. Um, but it's not always something that fits all institutions. Um, another option we have is online or real-time scheduling where students, um, whether they have a pre-registration or not, can enroll um, in the system um, through the online interface. Our system is a design where it will automatically hold space and sections based on expected student demand so that we can prevent some of those um, conflicts occurring by um, classes filling up at popular times when we know there's a, a large potential for um, conflicts in the future because students need particular combinations of courses um, to meet their curricular needs. We also have other features such as reservations if you need to hold spaces in a course for a certain set of students um, that you can hold those um, for the students who need them. Um, we have wait lists and we have um, the ability to have instructor consent or departmental consent into a course. Um, advisors can interact with the system to uh, register or check the registration of students to make sure um, students are flowing into the courses as they expect them to or to make adjustments um, as may be needed. Some other features of our scheduling system are the ability to do examination timetable. Um, this includes both um, ability to do midterm examinations, final examinations, um, and these may be at the course level um, where you have multiple section exams that are combined into one meeting, um, at the class level or combinations of, of multiple classes into a, 
into a single exam. Each exam is assigned to an examination period and one or more rooms. Um, and again, as with the timetabling process, we seek to minimize student conflicts that exist. These may be direct conflicts, back-to-back um, -back conflicts between exams, or having more than a set number of exams on a day. Another major feature of the system is the ability to do event management. Um, we've included this because um, the classrooms you're using for your courses are often needed for a lot of other events on the campus, whether it's student meetings, um, thesis dissertations, other ad hoc events um, where your classroom space is needed. This is fully integrated so that when a timetable is created, um, it automatically adds those class events into the event management portion of the system so you can start managing your events um, based on the courses that exist in the timetable. The system also allows for data exchange with other systems, particular student information systems are, are critical. Um, we have some ability to define distances between room to help with the travel distance problem. You can define date patterns and time patterns that are appropriate to your, to your campus or institution um, to tailor the system to best meet your needs. Um, as an overview, um, we think that Unifi Unitime provides a state-of-the-art timetabling solution for campuses that are interested in improving um, the ability of the students to get the courses they need to meet their degree requirements. Um, it's a general enough system that it meets the needs of multiple institutions. Um, it is easy to extend or customize as may be necessary to meet some of your specific needs. It has been applied to very large institutions such as Purdue, which has 40,000 students, so it can handle um, just about any situation you may throw at it. We have been gaining institution in, interest from institutions around the world. Um, at this point, we have over 20 adoptees, um, and we're gaining interest all along. And um, we're in the Imperio incubation process, so. Um, we look forward to, to working with some of you at some point in the future. You can get more details on the Unitime project by visiting our website at unitime.org. We have an online demo on that site, which you can use to play a little bit with the system and gain a little bit more information. Or we welcome you to contact us at the addresses noted on the, on the site. Beyond that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time or um, you may have typed in during the chat session. Great. Thanks, Keith. That was a fantastic uh, overview of the project. Um, I don't see that we have any pending questions uh, in the chat so far. Uh, so we'll give it, uh, give it just a minute here to see if anybody's got anything they want to ask about. Uh, otherwise we'll We'll wrap it up. Uh, Keith, are you all planning to um, be at the Aperio conference in June in uh, in Baltimore? And uh, is that going to be an opportunity for people to see more and meet you and so forth? Yes, it is. We would hope to have some of us there. And um, our thoughts are we'd like to do uh, getting started with um, Unitime workshop for people who are interested and maybe several presentations on particular aspects of it. Yeah, fantastic. The, um, I know the call for proposals for the uh, conference is due out imminently, uh, I believe, today. So, uh, okay, we'll be looking forward to it. Be excited to have everybody uh, at the conference and, uh, and looking forward to talking about things. All right, well, it doesn't look like we have any, uh, any questions we need to address at this point. So uh, thanks very much to, uh, to everyone who attended, and thanks very much to, uh, to Keith uh, and his colleagues for their presentation. We look forward to seeing you all at the next uh, uh, event in the webinar series. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye.